Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV and also welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series. In this series, I cover an important Linux topic one video at a time. And today's video takes us to, well, variables. If you are at all familiar with programming languages, then the concept is the same here. We want to take information and maybe we want to utilize that information more than once. We especially don't want to type the same thing over and over again. And that's something that variables help us achieve. Now, before we get started, I just need to thank the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connected Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as NextCloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate. And it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. And with that out of the way, let's dive in to variables in Linux. Now, before I get started and show you how to declare a variable, there's another command that we have to know in order to follow along with this video. And that command is the echo command. That's going to be a command we're going to use throughout this video. Now I have an entire video that covers that command in greater detail, but you don't have to watch that video to understand this one. The basic idea behind echo is that what we could do is echo something to the terminal. So we can echo hello world, for example, and it's going to print whatever we type in the double quotes. But what does that have to do with variables? Well, you'll see the relationship very shortly but now that we understand the basic usage of the echo command, it just echoes whatever you type after the command, we can continue to learn variables. And in fact, let's set a variable that's equal to hello world. What I'm going to do is call it my var. So the first thing to know is when you want to declare a variable, you give it a name just like I did here. It doesn't matter what you call it. I called it my var, I think that's good enough. And then you type equal. And then inside double quotes, we could type whatever we want that variable to contain. So what I'll do, is type hello world. Now at first it looks like nothing happened. Well, something did actually happen. We've created a variable called my var, but how do we use it? That brings us back to the echo command. Now before I showed you that we could type something like echo and then hello world to print that onto the screen. So that's fairly straightforward. However, what we could also do is type echo and then the name of the variable. Now, one thing to keep in mind though, is anytime you are referencing a variable, you have to reference it with a dollar symbol. You type a dollar symbol just like that, and then the name of the variable. And I called mine my var. So when you declare a variable, you do not include a dollar sign. You only include that when you want to reference the variable. That helps the bash shell understand that you are referring to a variable and not something else. So anyway, I'll press enter and it says, well, hello world. I was able to echo hello world to the screen without having to type it. Now, anytime I want to refer to hello world, I can simply refer back to the variable without having to type it again. And that's one of the main benefits of declaring a variable. So at this point, we know how to declare a variable and we also know how to echo what it contains. But what exactly can we use variables for in a practical sense? Well, there's all kinds of things that we could use variables for and I'll give you an example right now. Now I just noticed that I'm logged in as Voltron. That was a joke in another video that I recorded, but I guess I'll go along with it. Anyway, inside this user's home directory, we have a backups directory. And inside that directory, we have another directory that's named after a date. But anyway, the basic idea here is I have a backups directory and underneath that, I can include dated folders for the date of the backup that I'm doing. 
And if today was August 16th of 2023, then that might be a directory that I'll have inside the backups directory. Now, what I don't want to do is type out, well, slash home, and then my username, backups, and then the date folder every single time I want to reference that folder. I mean, it works, even though the folder is empty. I mean, the command work is listing the storage of that directory, but there's nothing in there. But if I'm going to be working with this path over and over and over again, what I don't want to do is type that path every single time. I'd rather type something else to refer to that path, and that'll help shorten the commands that I execute on the system. So here's what I'll do. I'll just recall that command right here. I'm going to put some quotes around it, and I'll turn it into a variable. I'll call it my dir. I'm not feeling super creative when it comes to variable names today. But anyway, I'll set that equal to the path right here. And if I echo the variable, well, it shows the path. So it looks like I did it right. Now, the point is here, I could use the variable anywhere that I might refer to the path. Since the path is in the variable, then that variable is going to be useful anytime I'm referring to the path. Anyway, since the variable contains this path, anytime I need to refer to this path, I can refer to the variable instead. For example, instead of typing out the entire ls command again, I could type ls and then my dir just like that. And it doesn't list the storage for anything because again, there's nothing in the folder, but you get the point. I was able to refer to the directory with just the variable name. And for another example, since that directory is empty, how about I put something inside that directory? So what I'll do is just echo hello world again. I'm just going to redirect that into a file called hello.txt. And we have that right here. And what I'll do next is move that text file into the data directory. So I'll type mv for move. That's just a normal Linux command, nothing special here. I want to move the hello.txt file. And where I want to move that inside of is the directory. So rather than type out the entire directory, I'll just simply type my dir with a dollar sign in front of it to refer to the variable that includes that directory. And if I list the storage, we can see that the hello.txt file is gone. And if I list the storage of the directory itself, and I'll refer to the variable because that's why we created it, we can see that we have hello.txt inside that directory. And since that variable included a path, I was able to use that path as an argument to two different commands. In fact, I could also type cat and then my dir for the directory slash and then hello.txt. Since it's inside that directory, I won't even need to refer to the directory outside of the variable for viewing the contents of the file either. So I'll press enter. And there you go. It says hello world exactly like we typed inside the file. And that command is a lot shorter than having to type out the entire path over and over again because, well, if you are repeating the same thing over and over again, then you're doing it wrong. Why are you doing that? Just use a variable. It's so much easier. Sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to let you know that I really enjoy making this content for you guys. I have a ton of fun. If you enjoy the content that I produce, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. The thing is, producing content like this isn't cheap. So by giving back to the channel, you can help me make even more content for you guys. And to find out more about how you can support Learn Linux TV, what you could do is go to support.learnlinux.tv and there you'll find some of the ways that you can help support the channel. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Now for the next example, what I'm going to do is echo the contents of another variable. So I'll type echo and then what I'll do is type dollar sign home. And what I get back is slash home slash Voltron. Well, that's interesting. I never declared that variable. So where did that come from? And also while we're at it, I can echo the contents of the user variable. And each of those variables have something inside of them. But I assure you, I did not create those variables off camera. Those were already here. And the reason why is because these are known as environment variables. On your Linux shell, you'll have a number of these. And you can see them by typing env just like that. And you'll get a complete list. I mean, just look at all these. There's a bunch. I didn't declare any of these here, but well, they exist. Now the idea here is these are, like I mentioned, environment variables, and your session will include a number of these, and this is completely normal. 
And these variables are very helpful to us because if we need to refer to any of these things, for example, our shell, we have that right here. We have the host name, that's showing the name of the computer, it's footage PC, so anytime I want to view the name of this particular computer, I could echo the contents of host name, just like that. We see editor, that's showing what my default text editor happens to be. PWD for the working directory is showing me which directory I'm inside of. If I didn't have that in my prompt, I could find out from that variable, and so on. There's a lot of helpful variables here that are created for us, and these are known as environment variables. And we could use the env command to view the environment variables that we have in our session. On your end, you'll have completely different variables. Some of them will be exactly the same. For example, if you are also using the bash shell like I am, then shell on your end will equal that as well. But your username is probably not Voltron, so chances are the PWD variable will not show Voltron as it does for me, but you get the point. Environment variables are helpful and, for the most part, are created for us automatically. Now also notice that each of these environment variables are named in all caps. All the variables that I had you create were in lowercase, so what's up with that? Well, the idea here is that environment variables are in uppercase. That's how they're declared by the system. When we declare a variable, it's a best practice to use lowercase, and that helps people differentiate in scripts, for example, which variables you are referencing that are environment variables and which ones are, well, variables that you created yourself. Now, the thing is, though, there's nothing enforcing this rule. If I was to create a variable with all uppercase characters, it would accept it. This is just a suggestion and not a rule. In fact, I have a habit of using uppercase for all of my variables. I don't know why I do that. You might have seen me do that in some of the tutorials that I have produced for this channel. So again, there's no reason why we can't do that. It's just a best practice, and I guess using all uppercase for everything is a bad habit that I need to fix on my end. But I suppose it doesn't matter because all of the scripts that I gave you guys, well, they seem to work just fine. But I just wanted to mention the best practice around naming variables and make sure that you are aware that environment variables exist on your system. So if you need to refer to any of these things in a script, you can absolutely do that. So as you can see, variables are fairly easy and straightforward. You can declare them and refer to them, and there's even some variables on your system, environment variables, that are there for your convenience. But did you know that you could capture the output of a command in Linux and save that output as a variable itself? Well, you can, and I'm going to show you how right now. And for a random example, I'm going to capture the output of the ls command. Specifically, what I'll do is capture this output right here. So how do we capture the output and save it as a variable? Well, let's look at exactly how to do that right now. So what I'll do is create a variable called file underscore list, just like this. And what I'll do is set that equal to a subshell. What is a subshell? Well, I'll type it out and then I'll explain it. So what I'll do is type a dollar sign and then two parentheses just like this. And then I'll type in the same command, ls-l slash etsy, just like that. And it accepted the command. So if I didn't know any better, I would say that it probably worked. Now, before I show you the output, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should or that it's going to be useful as is. This is just an example, but anyway, I'll echo the contents of that variable right now. So I'll echo file list just like that, and we get a wall of text. So essentially line breaks were not taken into account here, but I did legitimately capture the output right here from the ls command and saved it as a variable. But what exactly is going on right here? I mentioned earlier that when we refer to variables, we do so with a dollar sign in front of the variable name. Now we have a dollar symbol right here in front of the equal sign, but we're not setting this equal to another variable. Whenever you see a valid command inside a dollar symbol with parentheses, that's not a variable, even though it might look like one. What we have here is actually a command being run inside of what's known as a subshell. And the simplest way to think of a subshell is opening another shell just to run a single command. Normally, when you run a command like ls, it runs inside your current shell, the one that you're currently interacting with. With a subshell, however, a new shell is created for that command to run inside of. That's a more complicated topic than what we're going to cover here, but I think the explanation I just gave you will tell you everything you need to know in order to understand what's going on here. So essentially, we are creating a variable named file list. Instead of providing it with what exactly we want inside that variable, what we're doing instead is telling it to grab the output from a subshell, and the output from that subshell will be captured and stored inside the variable. 
Inside the subshell, I'm running the ls command, but it doesn't really matter what command I use here. Whatever command is there inside the parentheses will be captured and stored as the contents of the variable. So what's happening here is when the file list variable is being declared, it's going to immediately run a subshell and run the command that you see right here and capture that information. So now anytime we want to refer to the output of the ls command that I have here, we could do so by viewing the contents of this variable. However, that might not have been the best example though. Let's see an example that is useful. And for that, I'm going to introduce you to another command, the date command. It's a command that you might have already known about. It prints a current date and time. So now here you're seeing when I'm recording this video. And it'll be interesting to see how long it takes for me to edit this and get this out to you guys. But from this output, you know that I'm recording this video on Tuesday, May 30th of 2023. Obviously the date is going to keep changing. I mean, it literally changes every second, every nanosecond and so on. Every time we enter this command, we're going to get completely different output. So what I'll do is create a variable. I'll call it my date, just like that. I'll set it equal to, you guessed it, a subshell. Inside the subshell, I'll type date, just like that. And the variable was declared. If I echo it out, I'm going to get that string right there. And no matter how many times I view the contents of this variable, it's always going to have the same date. And here's an example where this might help you. Let's say you are running a script and you want to capture for the log file when the script started executing. So maybe the first thing you'll do is capture the current date and time when the script starts running. And then if you want to put something in the log file that shows when it started running, you can do that. You've captured or created a snapshot of what the date command equaled at the time that you created the variable. And this is very helpful when it comes to scripting. But all in all, if you want to capture the output of a command, this is how you do it. Now I'm going to close today's video right here. I showed you the basics of creating and viewing variables in Linux. And of course there's a lot more where that came from that I could teach you. But the thing is, if I go beyond what I've shown you so far, I'm getting into the territory of bash scripting and I have an entire video series that goes over exactly that. So if you want to take your bash knowledge even further and also your variable knowledge even further and many other concepts related to scripting, definitely check out that series. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next video.